Abigail actually was in the NICU for 10 days, so. They did the newborn screening in the hospital right after she was born, and she failed the first one, and she failed the second one, so then the protocol is then they want us to schedule an appointment with a uh, audiologist. I met Abigail around 10 months of age, and she had already been diagnosed with a severe to profound hearing loss, and her parents were coming to me to make sure she was performing as well as she could be. Genetic testing did show that both Jeremy and Stacy each had the recessive gene, and when it was passed down, that is what caused the hearing loss. It still was a shock, though, when Zoe was born. She failed the newborn hearing screen, and um, that was really hard for us. And since I had been working with Abigail, the family came to me right away, and we did the diagnostic test. We did confirm that she had a severe to profound hearing loss, and she was fit with amplification just like her sister was very shortly after that. You get the diagnosis and you are grieving because when you have this child, you don't anticipate that um, this is gonna be part of your life. When they're young, like a baby, an infant, they have to go through ear molds, new ear molds, like almost every month because their ears are changing so much that they need the new molds. So that uh, adds to the cost. Plus, you know, the drive down and and none of that was covered by insurance. So yep. just having options out there to help support parents and children like our daughters is just amazing. So the really exciting thing is we have lots of technology to help partially restore hearing, but it's very expensive. Our great family has two little girls who needed two sets of hearing aids, and that's many thousands of dollars. The Fairview Foundation at the time was able to provide some partial funding to help them out. Patients like Abigail and Zoe can benefit from a wide range of services from Fairview Rehabilitation, including speech therapy, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and oral rehabilitation. We want to be able to have do every single opportunity that may arise that could help our girls with the development of oral spoken language. Um, that is our goal for them and that's why we're pursuing the cochlear implant. Abigail and Zoe will, they won't be able to hear music and have that enjoyment of music like us. Hear the birds chirp, won't be able to hear me say I love you. But this made us want to pursue the cochlear implant even more. A cochlear implant is an electronic device and it transforms sound into electrical signals and it replaces the hearing part of the inner ear. The cochlear implant surgery could change Abigail and Zoe's lives in multiple ways. I think the most important one is just that they will have the best access to sound so that they can learn to use listening and spoken language as their main mode of communication. It will take them from being deaf to hopefully being a hearing child. They've educated us as parents knowing what this means and what we can do. They have opened us to so many opportunities for our children and we wouldn't be where we are today without them. The fact that they're going through this together is really unique and fun. They're just such a team and that's what's so cool about this journey about them um, having cochlear implants on the same day. For children like Abigail and Zoe who get a cochlear implant, parental involvement is absolutely key. It is a lot of work. They need a lot of listening therapy to learn what to do with this new sound. I feel we have been chosen for this journey because we are we're up for it. You know, this is their life. This is the life that we've all been chosen and it doesn't phase them. It's a very exciting day. It's, it's a nerve-wracking day. It's a crazy day. But it is the beginning to some really awesome things. Uh, sometimes I have thoughts, what are you What are you thinking? What are your thoughts? You know, you hear that three-year-olds will say the funniest things, and I can't wait to hear those funny things out of Abigail. She seems to be very silly and funny and fun and outgoing, and um, I just can't wait to hear what she thinks <laughs> and express that to us, and she just appears to want to so badly. On the initial day of cochlear implantation programming, we check a lot of different settings. However, we're basically using electricity to stimulate the implant to give them access to sound electronically. Done. Quack, quack, quack. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah. We put the sound in through her implant and we're looking for her hearing nerve to respond. Yeah, is that funny? Now it's on again. I love my job because I get to be a part of the family and I'm on this journey with them. She's not just our audiologist, but she's almost like a friend or family member. She's just always there to support us. And the whole clinic um, is just amazing. They've been phenomenal. I mean, oh, gosh. they made it make you feel at home when you're here. And They know us by name when we walk in there. They say hi to Abigail and Zoe, and it's just, it's just a team of, it's like we're a family. I think their future is bright. They will have the best access to sound and will be able to hear the best they can with both ears. After watching what Abigail and Zoe have gone through these last you know, months and years, it's, just, you know, it's made me realize that those two are my heroes and I mean, I could never imagine doing what they've, they're doing at that age. Our goal for them is just that uh, we've uh, given them the resources to be able to achieve whatever they want to be. It's going to be a special memory that they'll always have their new hearing birthday on the same day. <laughs>